Hey, this is Melissa with LAGreenLiving.com. I'm here with Tim Harvey, the zero emissions traveler. He just completed a journey around the globe. So how did it all start? I know you started in British Columbia in Vancouver and you, and you went to Moscow. Yes. So how did that well, Originally the plan was to make it from Vancouver to Moscow by human power in order to show people that anything is possible uh, without causing emissions. And, and the route between Vancouver and Moscow is one of the most difficult in the world because it goes through the Arctic, it goes across the stormy Bering Sea, through regions, Beringia, which has no roads. So we had to follow rivers like the Yukon and then uh, row the stormy Bering Sea and then hike over the ice as winter set in. And this is winter in the coldest place north of Antarctica. Now, if we could do this, surely, then just about anyone could make it to work or school. Before the trip, you were living in El Salvador. How did that influence your decision to do this trip? Well, El Salvador was hit really hard by Hurricane Mitch uh, in the late 90s and has been hit again last year by a major hurricane. And it just happens over and over again. And the people are struggling to survive on the fringes of society. They're, they have very little access to clean water and health care and their houses are being torn apart every couple of years more and more frequently because of global warming and when I saw that and spoke with these people and, and was able to understand the difficulty of living in hurricane ravaged countries and then returning to Vancouver um, I experienced a culture shock like never before I, I saw that people had very little perspective of the big, bigger picture and at first I felt very uh, a feeling of impotence because I wasn't doing something and there was nothing I could possibly do I felt to take on this problem but then I realized you know what we're all in the world in this together I may be very far from these people in El Salvador but we're part of a global team did you take the opportunity to educate them about global warming and emissions and if so what was the response well uh, people are surprisingly well aware of global warming and how it's affecting them uh, right down to for example, the Chukchi First Nation in uh, northeastern Siberia, they are very well aware of the fact that uh, natural ecosystems are unraveling around us. Uh, it's our mission to let uh, present this story to people in places like Vancouver, places like Los Angeles, and so that people can make the connection between driving to the store, combusting gasoline, and the people who are losing their ancient lifestyles uh, because of global warming. You mentioned earlier about if you could do this trip, then I could commute to work Absolutely. on a bike, right? So what are what are ways that you convince people and persuade them that these are simple steps they can take in their lives? Absolutely. Uh, it is not necessary to do anything quite as extreme as I've done on this trip. But I do like to emphasize that self-propelled living is a whole heck of a lot of fun. It's nothing like stepping out of a car looking for parking. It's you just cruise into wherever you're going, lock up your bike, and you're ready for the day. And, and so by emphasizing the fun factor, um, it, that's how I persuade people. And people will be inspired to jump on their bikes and to recycle their cars. And uh, all I can hope is that I spark change in a few people and that they spark change in a few other people. And I, it's, I call it the butterfly effect. It's, uh, uh, I can't remember who coined the term, but it was back in the 60s. And it's all about a butterfly can start a storm. And I think we're all butterflies. And uh, the more people I touch, the more they, they generate more currents of change and uh, hopefully I think that our generation can reverse or stabilize the climate and reverse the trend we're on and I just want to be part of that.